I have come to believe in its most simple, boiled down uh, understanding that the path to a better world is, is a three-step process. Uh, most people, a lot of people talk about peace. That's always kind of pissed me off a bit because peace at the end of a barrel of a gun or peace without justice, as far as I'm concerned, is a peace not worth having. I'd rather die free than live in an oppressed, uh, tyrannical world. Um, even if I, as a white person from the West, can live a comparatively good life, which I could, I've, I've, had, I've had that, I've lived in Hawaii, I've had my own business, I've had money, I've lived in paradise, you know, da-da-da-da-da. But am I able to do that in good conscience and simply go on about my business and forget about the rest of the world? That does not work for me. If we truly, truly face up uh, to, to the challenges before us, it is uh, a lot easier than we think to actually uh, rectify the issues that we're facing. And it's really, it's really quite ironic um, from my experience, you know, how people even today uh, hold a very kind of pessimistic view. And yet, right there in front of you, you can see changes that are so profound that if you really open your mind up and get out of sort of the training, the negative perception of reality, of course, what's the news? The news is nothing but a bunch of bad news. It's all bad. Everything's horrible. There is no solutions. The politicians are corrupt. Uh, war everywhere. This is uh, very, very important to understand. The reason why that's being done is because it gets you in a cynical point of view. It gets you to believe that there's nothing that you can do, that you are insignificant. And anything that you might venture to do is foolhardy at best, except the reality. This is very common in the West in particular, because we have a lot to lose in terms of material. And we've been intoxicated and entranced with the idea of material gain. And the cost of that is that we've actually sacrificed the much more profound, the spiritual and the more uh, philosophical aspects of life, which hold far greater value than anything physical. You need the physical to survive, but in terms to truly grow on a spiritual level, it has hardly anything to do with that growth. This is a process that I see playing out, and, and five years ago, ten years ago, uh, there was a whole lot less of that. So this is, an, uh, this is an amazing, amazing time to be alive. Truly amazing, and I genuinely believe that it is our generation right now that is going to decide the fate of life on planet Earth. My story in brief is uh, I grew up uh, in a charmed existence, Southern California, surfing, playing football, not soccer, football, proper football. Um, I had a, a beautiful life, a, a loving mother. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I always felt a little bit different. You know, I always kind of walked my own path. Um, but I wasn't an awkward kid. I had, you know, friends who were popular. I was reasonably popular myself, I suppose. So I never felt socially awkward per se, but I always knew something was amiss. I, I, I could tell that early in school, you know, from an early age I could tell this was bullshit, quite frankly, most of it. And, um, you know, I, I, at the same time I had a wonderful life, you know, I, I really did. And uh, at the age of uh, 19 I joined the Marine Corps because I thought I was a little lacking in discipline and initiative. I had been raised by my mother. She did spoil me. God love her. You know, I love her to, you know, love her immensely, but, uh, you know, she's a woman, and uh, women and mothers dote over their only child, you know, and they uh, spoil us, and uh, I didn't really learn how to be a man because I didn't have a man, uh, so I, I didn't know it at the time, but I joined the Marine Corps because I was looking for the father that I never had, and, um, of course, I had no idea of the implications of doing this. I, I believed all the spoon-fed crap of, you know, my nation's the greatest in the world, freedom and democracy and all this sort of stuff. And while I was in the Marine Corps, I ended up speaking out about abuse of power. You know, one of the things they teach in the Marine Corps is leadership by example. And uh, my leaders were not leading by example. They were abusing their position of authority. And uh, when I spoke out about that, I made a conscious decision to do it openly. I could have done it clandestinely, um, but I didn't think that was the honorable thing to do. So I did an honorable thing, and I was punished severely. Uh, and it shattered the illusion of the Marine Corps being about honor and integrity. I realized that I had become a slave, that I had imposed slavery upon myself, volunteered for it, literally, and that I could kill or be killed uh, as a result of this decision. And it caused me to reflect deeply on everything that I had come to believe. And what it did was it put me in a mindset that allowed me to receive information that previously I never would have accepted. Burning the flag is an example. When I was a younger man, I thought, man, any bastard who wants to do that, you know, I look at that now in a completely different way, and I never would have heard any argument to the contrary. 
it opened me up to information. And in that context, I, I, I indulged in a very uh, serious course of self uh, study, uh, independent study, and I sought out uh, what I thought were authoritative uh, voices in various aspects of life, philosophy, history, and so on and so forth. And in the process of having an open mind, truly open, and really looking at alternative sources of information, I came to realize that virtually everything that I had been taught was the opposite of the truth, literally. And the more I got deep into it, uh, initially it made me very angry. I still have anger, but the anger is very much based on love. Love of this beautiful planet, of this human family, and our extended family of life that embraces all living creatures. What a beautiful blessing we've got, and how fucking outrageous that we're destroying that. And anyway, you know, from that, yeah, I've, I've walked a very unique path. Uh, I could go on and on and on about many different things that I've been involved in. But the bottom line is I have followed my heart. I have done what I felt was right. And oftentimes that was the opposite of what any of my friends and family and those who love me would have advised. In fact, uh, many times I've done things that they all would have thought and said was crazy and you shouldn't do it. Uh, every time I've done that, it's ended up being the greatest blessing. And even that even includes, you know, in the heartache and the pain, the injustice, the suffering were great, great, great blessings. I'm absolute, I'm not just a believer uh, I am an applier of the principle of doing what you believe is right, no matter what the consequence. And while I've made many mistakes in terms of not honoring my obligations to my immediate family, being very focused on the bigger, broader picture without actually taking care of my domestic responsibilities and whatnot, um, thankfully I've grown through that phase. I've become a wiser man. And uh, I've applied the uh, principle of acting on what you believe in your heart is right. And what a beautiful path that is. I don't care what anybody says. If you act that way with genuine intention and with a lack of fear and some level of intelligence, boy, oh boy, what an amazing path that is. 46 years old now, I don't know how much time I'll have in this plane, but uh, I can damn sure guarantee that I will make the most of it. And uh, if the past is any reflection of future, uh, boy, oh boy, the blessings that are coming my way. And I hope for the rest of the world, should we adopt this kind of philosophy and approach to life, I have no doubt whatsoever that we can achieve a better world, something that we can be truly proud and happy to hand over to our children. And quite frankly, to me, that is the greatest responsibility of all. If we are turning a blind eye and pretending as if the problems are not severe, grave, to the point of complete total annihilation, personal and collective annihilation is a distinct possibility. If we don't face this, we may very well hand that over to our children. And uh, I think that's a dereliction of our duty, to say the least, and we should be ashamed of ourselves if indeed we hand over this world in a worse state. But where I see us right now in terms of humanity, its evolution, its growth, its understanding, its consciousness, it is absolutely undeniable from my perspective that the growth of consciousness is unparalleled in human history. We know of no time where we have grown and understood more and more and more at such an accelerated pace as we do now. And I find that extremely exciting. And I believe it is the pre-condition to creating a better world. So I'm not sure which way it's going to go, quite frankly. I think it's uh, beyond uh, ridiculous to assume that it's all going to be all right. At the same time, we shouldn't operate on fear. We have an opportunity. It truly is up to us. If we do what we're capable of, boy, oh boy, people are not even going to recognize the world that we're going to have in the future, a much better world, a sane world in which everyone has all that is needed. And in fact, we can live in a state of abundance. And actually, instead of fighting and killing each other over our differences, which we currently do, we will celebrate these differences and say, wow, you know, what an amazing perspective. Even though I don't necessarily agree how beautiful is that? That's the world that I can see. I can literally see it, and I believe we'll have it if we do what we're capable of. If there was one, f one physical uh, subject, one material subject that we should focus on, in my opinion, it is very clear that the head of the snake is the financial system. We can argue till the end of time about who runs the world. Is it the Jesuits? Is it the reptilians? Is it the Illuminati? Is it the Freemasons? We can go on and on and on and on about this, but I don't think it is reasonable to even begin arguing about the mechanism that is used to exert this control. The mechanism is finance. The whole point of finance is to indebt 
otherwise to enslave. What is a mortgage? I mean, what does that stand for? It's called, it's a death grip. So when you get a mortgage, you have a death grip held over you because you are in debt. You don't even own the house. The bank owns the house that loans you the money to buy the house unless you're fortunate enough to have all the money to buy it outright. And even then, you can be taxed by the government. And if you fail to keep up with those taxes, the government can then take it from you. The whole system is based on a financial fraud which effectively takes the power that we have and it gives it to a tiny group of individuals who are running the world through the control of finance. With the infinite supply of money that we have allowed them to take, they have literally an infinite supply of money. And with that money, and from their psychopathic point of view, they have bought everything and everyone who can be bought. So those of us who cannot be bought because we operate on a level that goes way beyond the material, we are not rewarded for such behavior. We are punished for such behavior. And the most slovenly, disgustingly criminal, pedophilia, uh, you know, corrupt moral individuals, those are the ones that are rewarded in this system, which is upside down. We reward the pedophiles, we reward the corrupt, we reward the liars, we reward the people with no morals at all, and usually we compromise them under this system in terms of maybe a videotape. Maybe Barack Obama is gay. Maybe we have videotape of him having sex with another man, or perhaps uh, some other uh, acts that may be not so popular amongst many of the, of the electorate. Or maybe we have videos of uh, political leaders having sex with little boys or little girls. If I was in charge of the world and I was a psychopath and completely drunk on my own power, you can bet damn sure that's what I would do. I wouldn't allow anyone in a position of power who wasn't completely compromised. When you have an infinite supply of money, you can do this. Take that supply of money away, take that power back, put it in the hands of the people, get rid of fractional reserve banking, which is an obscenity in itself. Listen to the lessons of Jesus Christ if you're a Christian who got really pissed off when he went to the temple and he saw what the money changers were doing. Let's take back control of the issuance of money, and not just on a national level. I'm happy to see in Denmark that you have your own currency, you don't have the euro. But on every country's level, they should be issuing their own currency in a transparent, non-usury-based way in which it really, truly benefits the people. And in that way, we can literally free ourselves of the banking debt, which is drowning us all, and we can stop scrambling for the crumbs from the table of these filthy rich psychopaths and live in a state of abundance just by changing this one thing. And I'm not just talking about abundance for Western nations who have an artificially inflated value with their currencies. We all in the West are guilty of having that reward while the rest of the world is sucking on it. Every nation in the world can use a sensible financial policy to liberate themselves, to have world-class education, infrastructure, everything that a healthy society would require can be had in the worst, most corrupt African country in any part of the world. We can all have that if we simply change that one thing. John F. Kennedy did that about six months before he was taken out. He issued United States notes as opposed to Federal Reserve notes. I can assure you the powers that be knew the power of that act, and they took him right out. So the bottom line is if we as people understand this very simple principle, just this one thing, change this one thing, we can solve every other problem you can name. I don't care what the problem is. I can bring it back to the financial system and an infinite supply of money for a bunch of psychopaths who are running the world as opposed to an abundant supply of money for all of us. So in that sense, I'm very optimistic. This is not rocket science. I am not the smartest guy in the room. We can all understand this. And as soon as we do, we can exercise the same power that we had, but relinquished, and we can have a future for ourselves and our children. There's a lot to be optimistic about, quite frankly.